uh, people are distracted right now. They're, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, New Year's. Uh, they're not paying attention to the underlying currents, what's going on in the banking industry. The treasury uh, auctions haven't been going very well. Other areas, you know, the national debt uh, is going up. A couple of banks blew up two weeks ago. So there's a lot of stuff going on. The consumer just isn't paying attention to it. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, hey, we're in the last day of November today. We got good numbers coming out on the economy, on consumer confidence. Good numbers, at least at first blush. But what is the real story? And the real story, like they say, the devil's in the details. Well, the uh, real story is in the revisions. Russell Stone is with us now. Russell, great to have you back. So, uh, Consumer confidence uh, inched up for people like us, 55 plus, but for the rest of the world, it looks like it's uh, heading straight down. Yeah, that would be accurate. Uh, you know, I when I sent my notes over, I said consumer confidence hasn't gotten the memo yet. All right. <laughs> it's kind of like it's a lagging indicator in a lot of ways because uh, people are distracted right now. They're, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, New Year's. Uh, they're not paying attention to the underlying currents, what's going on in the banking industry. The treasury uh, auctions haven't been going very well. Other areas, you know, the national debt uh, is going up. A couple of banks blew up two weeks ago. So there's a lot of stuff going on. The consumer just isn't paying attention to it. It is going to catch up. There will be an alignment of the market reality in the consumer confidence. Yeah, well, if you look just at like auto sales, right? Uh, you know, subprime auto bubble, repossessions, all of that, it shows that interest rates, higher rates are definitely impacting the uh, auto bubble market. It's no longer a car market, it's a bubble market. Uh, right. You know, just tell us what your thoughts are on. Right by, uh, on my way to work, I drive by a very large auto auction uh, parking lot. It's extremely large. Uh, Southern. And uh, you can tell because in 07, 08, 09, the, those parking lots were filled to the brim. And then and slowly over time, that parking lot emptied out as the economy got better and those cars were sold off and the repossessed cars were less and less and less. Now that parking lot is filling up again, right? And last year, uh, the auto industry repossessed 1,700,000 automobiles. All right, so that's an indicator all by itself. Uh, same with foreclosures on the house set. The foreclosures are way up, right? Because between inflation and between the rise in interest rates, the consumer can't do everything, all right? Something's got to go. And when they start falling behind on paying their bills, it's a death spiral and eventually leads to a repossession or a foreclosure. Right. So, uh, so you got to look beyond the numbers, in other words, because you know what they say, uh, statistics lie and liars use statistics, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like the leading economic indicators, if you look at them all, right, uh, for the U.S., uh, the leading economic indicators are mostly pointing down, right? Right. I gave some example, new orders were down 0.22, weekly average initial claims uh, were down uh, 0.18. Building permits, private housing, or uh, it looks like negative. It's actually a positive. Building permits, private housing, negative 0.14. Interest rate spread on the Fed funds against the 10 year, uh, that was down 0.85. Those are all that and about 25 other indicators are all pointed down, not up. So that's why there is a, a, uh, a, uh, a conflict between consumer confidence and the real numbers. Mm -hmm. that just, uh, uh, so, so the real world and uh, the world of uh, statisticians, there's a disconnect, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. And if you think about it in your own world, uh, you know, you're looking at most people looking at 401ks and bank statements. Well, those haven't been badly impacted over the last six months because the market trended up in 2022. Uh, so it kind of Blossed over the the downturn from 2021, but it look at what's going on is the speculation is off the charts. The day trader speculation is off the charts. Uh, they have all sorts of investments that are coming to the forefront right now that are pure speculative. They have derivative derivative, right? So they have a derivative that is based on a derivative, right? Yeah, and people are buying them up left and right. 
All right, it doesn't make sense. Uh, there's no rational sense. The markets right now, the valuation of the S and P 500 is seven times what it should be. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a powerful statement. It can't keep this up. It's going to be. It's going to be forced back into reality as the credit bubble continues to contract. Uh, the supply of money is being um, destroyed. And that's what's happening. As the, the, the money supply, the M2 money supply contracts, the velocity of money right now is lower than it was in 1930. So all these things are telling us that there's bad news come. Yeah. So bad news is coming, but uh, the government's job is to uh, put that bad news off as long as it possibly can and uh, keep you buying and uh, acting in the so-called best interests of the economy, right? Yeah, but at some point they can't hide it anymore because pretty soon, you know, as they say, you know, if your neighbor loses his job, it's a recession. If you lose your job, it's a depression, right? Yeah. Now, well, the government can't hide $1.2 trillion in interest payments. They can't hide $34 trillion in debt. They mm -hmm. can't hide that the unfunded liabilities are now at $214 trillion and the failed bond auctions are getting uh, into the headlines now as well. All right. The bond vigilantes have uh, made their presence known, huh? Yeah. And what what do you think will happen when the interest rates go down to the you know junk bond arena, say like uh, B rated and C rated bonds? They're going to get obliterated, right? So there isn't a win win here until the credit bubble comes into alignment with with the consumer's expectation for value. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you know it's. Uh... Their job is to keep the party going. It used to be to take the punch bowl away, which they've already done, but they're trying to make you think that the punch bowl is still there, right? Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, Carrie, it's an election year as well. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so what is uh, you? what are you telling your clients? What are you as an investor doing here? Well, as... Uh, you know, I expect, you know, in this environment that we're going to see this year as it unfolds, and my expectation is December is going to be a very uh, disappointing month uh, economically uh, in the numbers. And with that expectation, you're going to see the political policy people change directions rapidly because it's an election year. So they're going to start promising us what we want to hear, right? So they're going to start rapidly changing their positions and the, the focus on what they're talking about. But it's not going to stop um, what's going to happen within the markets. The consumer is going to revolt against the government's policies and the corporate greed, right? And they're going to revolt just by they're they're going to pull back on their spending. Uh, they're going to pull back on on new cars, houses, vacations, campers, boats, planes, trains, and automobiles. They're going to pull back, and that will cause enough pain that will uh, force a change in direction. Our country is going to be humbled right? Before mm -hmm. we're restored, right? And we have to go through the humbling process because of all this debt and all the mismanagement has to be dealt with. Okay. So tell me, uh, Russell, what's your take on rising gold and uh, precious metals prices? Uh, I would be a buyer of silver first, not gold, but eventually when that ratio from 87 right now goes back to 15, sell your silver, buy more gold. But right now, I would be a buyer of gold or silver, but pre preferably silver. Okay, silver, the shiny metal, as we call it. And, and how high, the question that you ask, Carrie, is how high will it go? Well, if you do any research, there's a lot of speculation anywhere from $100 an ounce on silver. I've seen $1,000 an ounce on silver. That seems like pie in the sky, but it's not, not if you understand that it's been suppressed for 60 years. And the dollar is in trouble. So if we have a combination of the dollars no longer the world's currency reserve and it's devalued significantly, suddenly those commodities are going to look really, really attractive to a whole bunch of um, investors and consumers. All right. So we've seen the oil gyrating quite a bit, but yep. it's getting back up to $80 the barrel. Uh, yep. The world seems to be happy with that price. If gold and silver go up, then uh, you think oil is going to follow suit? No. Uh, here's why. Because they got that oil to go back up by uh, uh, cutting back on the supply of oil, right? But the demand is going down. So if you track the demand, the demand is going down. And the only way they can compensate for that is to increase or decrease the su supply, right? 
Okay, so, you know, I read an interesting article a few weeks back that in spite of the uh, current occupant's antipathy towards uh, petroleum, oil, and all forms of so-called fossil fuels, although I've never seen a fossil come out of the uh, out of the pump at the uh, gas station, but hey, be that as it may. You've seen fossils come out? <clears throat> but uh, be that as it may, American production is actually at all-time record highs, 13 million barrels per day, and with no decline in sight, even with lower rig counts. Um, you know, OPEC's uh, hands are kind of tied, aren't they? Well, we're not using our uh, capabilities, uh, not only in oil, but in also gold, silver, and all the other refined metals, uh, because there's so much bureaucracy to get these new discoveries to the market. It takes six, eight years to get these mineral discoveries to the market. Uh, same with oil. We're not using uh, our oil wealth as a weapon to lower the oil prices, right? We're using it to fulfill our need for oil within our country, but we're not exporting it to the world to force the price of silver down and to keep Saudi Arabia and Russia and China in check. Mm -hmm. And we we should be, and we could, we could be, and we should be doing that. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. So... Uh... Again, we look for harder assets. What's your take on real estate? Uh, you know, supply is down, but certainly the market's down. The home builders last week just reached a five-year high. To me, the home builders are like the perfect analog for interest rates. Mm. My, my problem with the home builders, uh, what data are you reading and who supplied the data on that information, right? I do not trust the home builder's information if it came from them because they have a vested interest in keeping the price of houses up because they have a thousand houses under construction that they need to sell. And if you look at all the big home builders in this country, they have a big stake in this to keep the house prices up. I don't trust the data if it comes from that. I look at what's going on and I don't see the inventories. And in logically speaking, why would somebody sell a house? With a three percent mortgage to move into a house with a seven or eight percent mortgage mm. doesn't make yeah, sense. I know. I know, but I I know what you're saying. But people actually do these things, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, and some people do. I just sold my house, Carrie, and it was it's going to be the worst investment those two young people ever made. Yeah. Oh well, caveat emptor, right? Yep. 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 My my heart goes out to people that are buying houses now. So to answer your question, Carrie. Uh, yeah, I would be saving money so that I can buy in another year when the market is down, all right? I wouldn't be a buyer in real estate until you can get a good deal on it. It's not now. They're still, the prices are still inflated. Okay. So, uh, so lots of good news ahead and uh, buy things of value. Uh, obviously, not all housing markets will be affected uh, equally on this. Not. Uh, but you know, it's it's actually the housing market. It's a bunch of sub markets scattered across the country, hundreds of them, really. So, uh, hey, good time to sell a house, though, huh? But there you go. Just take 08, right? And remember what 08 felt like in 09, the beginning of 09, and just multiply that by four or five times, and then ask yourself, do I really want to be a part of that? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. The 08, 09 was a real estate bubble. This is a global financial bubble. Look what's going on in China. Look what's going on in their economy. Look what's going on in Germany and Europe. There is no way in the world that anybody can convince me that how we report information in this country uh, lines up with those economies. It doesn't. Yeah, there's a definite disconnect, eh? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, street smarts over book smarts. Yeah, well, uh, experience uh, is often the best teacher, but often the most brutal teacher as well, right? You know, if, if if our kids never learned some hard lessons, they wouldn't have a whole lot of character. Okay. So life is full of hard lessons. That's how we get our character. Yeah, and stuff happens, right? It does. All right. Hey, tell us where we find you. How do we connect with you on the web? Uh, you can find me at uh, scrantfg.com uh, uh, for my website, uh, Scrant Financial Group in South Windsor, Connecticut. Uh, that's where I uh, put my desk uh, and any other way that you want to contact me. So 860-623-5557 is my phone number. All right. Hey, if you've got a question for Russell, myself, shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. The 
Uh, Russell's URL will be in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. I'd urge you to go and subscribe if you haven't done it already. Uh, Russell, a pleasure as always. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Uh, Merry Christmas, guys, and to your audience.